A new study shows that Korean food might just be the cheapest Asian food to make at home. But let's talk about if we even believe that. At least it's what this study from the UK said, but it sparked a lot of arguments on the internet. Is it hogwash? Is it hogwash? Are you calling like Korean food cheap? That is offensive. Um, guys, there was a study from the UK, so take that for what it is. Long story short, there was a meal prep kit company. They analyzed like five different ethnic cuisines. They took the top five dishes that people ordered on like Deliveroo and Uber Eats. Apparently Deliveroo is their, uh, you know, deliver food delivery service in the UK. And for Koreans, they analyzed Korean fried chicken, green onion pajon, bibimbap, bulgogi, and tapoki, and it uh, came in at as the cheapest cuisine to recreate those dishes at home. Mm, even considered cheaper than Chinese and Indian food and, of course, Japanese food. So anyways, guys, we're going to talk about the findings. We're going to talk about what the logic is, why this might be true, but also why it's not true. So please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. But I'll tell you this, David, what is very high quality is small ass sauce guys you can order it right now it is made with real truffle made in america very delicious check out the instagram at small ass sauce i mean obviously i think the first thing is like who did this study right you have to look at sort of the metrics of the study to make sense of this so what they did is they analyzed the top five dishes that everybody was ordering from five different cuisines and then they uh calculated those so the, the thing was Chinese was considered the most expensive, right, Andrew? But for Chinese, because people in the UK order very certain Chinese dishes, they, they were comparing it to like dim sum, Peking duck, and Kung Pao chicken. Right, those, especially Peking duck and dim sum, that is considered uh, not super cheap food, especially Peking duck. So to recreate Peking duck at home, I'm not gonna lie, is very costly to even just buy the duck and then in time it right. takes. So if anything, I guess this study shows, Andrew, that people in the UK when they eat Korean food, I guess they order the cheaper dishes. And when they're ordering Chinese food, they're tending to order things like Peking duck or, you know, things that are expensive. Yes, if you are comparing bibimbap and pajon and tteokbokki, which are rice cakes, to Peking duck, no doubt the Korean food is going to be cheaper. But, David, we've all been to expensive Korean restaurants, and Korean restaurants, I would say per person, they have, in America at least, less Super cheap options. They no, have no, more no. middle I, and high end. Yes, you're right. Korean restaurants in America, unless you're deep in a Korean American enclave, are typically what? Possibly even like twenty five to thirty dollars a person, right? Oh, if like, not more, because especially Korean barbecue, the meats that are grilled, it's all protein, you know. But I will say this, and I think this is the logic behind it, is that obviously they're comparing like kind of cheaper Korean dishes to a little bit higher end Chinese dishes, but also it's like. I think the raw ingredient cost of Korean food isn't that expensive, especially if you're talking about all the panchan side dishes. You mean outside of the, the meats, right? Yeah, aside from the proteins, right? You just have a bunch of vegetables, cucumbers. You have a bunch of cabbage. You have sprouts. You have seaweed, uh, uh, daikon carrots, stuff that is not super expensive in itself, but perhaps the preparation to make Korean food actually takes a long time because if you watch this kimchi documentary on Netflix, David, which I did, they, like, when they're making kimchi, they, they like, spread the gochujang in between each, like, cabbage leaf. Right, so it's right. a lot of labor. That's why they got a bunch of ajumas doing yeah, it, Yeah, a right? lot of, Rubbing like, it. happy, they got, they vibrant got a, ajumas. They love they, it. They're they like, got to oh, massage it in. Oh, so my soul. You know, and they're, like, massaging it out. But I'm saying that's a lot of human labor. How much of the arguing on the internet once this came out is because nobody wants to be called cheap, right? Right. But, of course, nobody's looking into the metrics of the study. It is true that when you see that headline it does seem like it could spark some confusion or people even feeling some type of way about it, right? Well, I'm assuming that the people most offended were Korean people who are like, what are you talking about? Like, Chinese food is the cheapest. Like, you can get, like, the, the dumpling, like, for dollar dumpling, but you can't do that for Korean food. So how is it the cheapest? But you like, you have to compare it to, the, like, David, what is Korean food, by the way? Is it Shin Ramen with Spam and Egg? Is Does that count as a... Yeah, because then it's super cheap. Right, you're That's saying... You, you're saying Spam, Egg, Mayo, Nori, and then uh, some kimchi. Yeah. That could... Some people serve that, right? To be honest, some Korean food, it does use a lot of, like, older American, like, army food, like, like in the Budae Jjigae, which is Korean army stew. So, yes, yeah, some of it is cheap. Some of it is cheap, but not all of it. 
Yeah, I mean, how much of it has to even do with the perception of, like, that motherland country's, like, GDP per capita? Because, you know, like, Indian food is actually really expensive to cook at home because for an average person, they have to buy, like, up to 100 spices. So it's actually cheaper to go to a restaurant because they can, like, have economies of scale and actually have a stockpile of those 100 spices. I mean, listen, I'm not going to lie. In most people's mind initially, this graph would be flipped upside down. Instead of Korean, Japanese, Mediterranean, Indian, Chinese as the most expensive, most people would put Chinese as the cheapest, Indian, then Korean, and then Japanese. And I just don't understand because they ate, they made sushi at home and ramen, what type of ramen? You know what I mean? I don't know, man. I don't. At the end of the day, the reason why the study makes sense, even though it doesn't make any sense, is because it's based off the top five items that people like to order from those cultures. Dude, yeah, anyways. So let's get in the comments section, David, because there's some, what, offended Asian Americans? Yeah, some people said this is not a very good methodology at all. This is a UK report. I'd have to say the Mexican food is the cheapest. Interestingly enough, Andrew, or not interestingly enough, Mexican food does not even chart in the UK because they have no, they're, they're not close to South America in the UK at all. Just there's, say it. There's, Just say it. There's say very, it. very little Mexican food penetration in the UK market. Just say it. There's no Mexicans in the UK. Yeah, that's I'm true. just gonna. I would assume there's not a lot of Mexicans in the UK. Right, right, right. So I guess a lot of people were saying that that in their mind would have been the cheapest per pound. Mm -hmm. But if we go by the study, it has to go by what people order. Right. However, I do think most people order what tacos and burritos and stuff like right, that. Right, right. Um, somebody said I thought a lot of Indian food would be cheap because it is vegetarian. Vegetables tend to be cheaper than proteins, and they often can cook it in bulk. In terms of someone saying a big pot of curry. I actually don't know if this is true, to be honest. Indian food appears to be cheap because it's very saucy. Like, you can't really tell the difference between chicken tikka masala, chicken curry, and, like, some other stuff. But it's not cheap. It's not cheap. Indian food's not super cheap. I, I think that people have an image of Indian buffets from, like, the early 2000s. Those days are over. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, guys. A lot, a large reason why, like, Chinese food is so cheap is because those people who are cooking it are just, like, taking razor-thin margins and, like, slaving away uh, just because they cannot escape the uh, Confucian values of work. This person said that, personally, as a Korean-American, I do feel like Korean food is fairly cheap because one does not need that many different sauces and spices. Most dishes can be made with sesame oil, soy sauce, and sugar, garlic, onion, rice, and then add gochujang and gochugaru and then uh, da enjang. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I do think there's some logic in that Korean food oftentimes, whatever you consider a Korean dish can be very simple. Right, right, right. right. But it is true. If you are going to make your own kimchi from scratch and make your own panchan, your refrigerator, it would take like a whole refrigerator no, full. And if you had to factor in that hourly labor cost, right, because all those things that are quote unquote cheap, like the spinach and the panchan, that needs to take time and have care yeah. to marinate in the... Uh, Sesame oil. But of course, when you go to Korean barbecue, most of the cost that you're paying for is like the, is the beef, is right. the steak, the cow. So, Andrew, some Korean Americans and Koreans in Korea got into arguments basically because somebody said, yeah, I'm Korean and I think that most of Korean food is just poverty food, soups with strong flavors and then rice to pad it out. And then someone said, that is simply not true. You are only referring to bude jjigae. You know, a lot of the banchan or the side dishes were made for nobility, otherwise known as junshik. And some of the foods were born out of necessity. But this guy was like really offended by the other Korean American calling Korean food poverty food. Yeah, I I would not call Korean food poverty food. That 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 to me is. And then and then there was uh, people getting into like almost the etymology of it and the, the history of it, saying that like yes, some of the dishes were driven from poverty, but a lot of the dishes were also held over from the dynastic Joseon dynasty royal days. Yeah, I think what people have to realize is that uh, there's a lot of vegetables in, um, it, a lot of pickled vegetables in Korea, and it's largely because the winters are very cold and they needed a pickle stuff throughout the winter, uh, winter stuff that would last long. Also, I think Buddhism played a big part in it where they weren't eating meat, so they kind of mastered their vegetable dishes. So I think what we know as Korean food, like if you think about bibimbap, there's not that much meat in it usually. There's usually an egg and then a bunch of panchan and then just rice. So that in itself is pretty cheap. But right. that is assuming that you have bulk of the panchan. Because if you had to make the panchan yourself, I don't think it's as cheap. 
Right, right, right. Um, somebody said, yep, it may be the cheapest to cook based on an ingredient basis outside of the proteins, but m- definitely the most time-consuming to make. So clearly, uh, that's not factoring it in there. Because this person was saying that if you make a Korean panchan, which looks like a salad, you got to blanch it, chop it up. You got to add soils, uh, oils and sauces, toss, and then you got to, you know, marinate, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas a ch- um, Western salad is literally... Just a bag of salad with just dressing on top of it. Right, right, right. Um, Andrew, ultimately, where what do you think the takeaways are? Because why did this go so viral? Because this is sort of a like um, a leading title for a study, right? I, I guess it does make you think a little bit differently about food. I mean, first of all, I overall don't agree with it. I think if you're comparing cheap Korean dishes to mid-level or expensive Chinese dishes, then yeah, they don't compare because the the more expensive dishes, period, are more expensive. But then what? They didn't, you know, it's because people are not ordering Korean barbecue to their doorstep because Mm. you go out and you get Korean barbecue. So that's why if they compared the average ticket cost that someone spends at a Korean restaurant, the average price versus the average price they spend at a Chinese restaurant. I know in New York City, the Korean restaurant average Oh, the price average ticket price is much higher. Would be much higher. I will say this though. We're talking about the UK and I believe that their exposure to Korean cuisine is much more in its infancy and in America, it's much more further along in its timeline. But even in America, people don't, they, like, they just order a lot of Korean chicken wings. I'm saying delivery. Delivery, right, right, saying. right, right. You're so, saying that people are not really... So uh, it, there, there's no culture around the takeout. We're talking about delivery food versus this and that. Anyway. Then it's true that there is no Korean Panda Express equivalent. No, Like, not. nobody has come up with anything. No one's really cheap in eyes, like, in fast food, ice cream, barbecue, that. Bro. How much of it ultimately boils down to the branding as a country? I think that this study went so viral because a lot of people were shocked because Korea's killing it right now. It's soft power is at an all-time high. So, for this study to come out and say, hey, we think that making Korean food at home is much cheaper than the other cuisines, it sort of cuts against sort of the narrative of the moment, right? I agree. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, I do think that Fortunately, unfortunately, this is how capitalism works. I do think sometimes the worth of immigrants or, or even that the, the, the labor of certain immigrants is judged against the GDP per capita of their home country. Mm-hmm. You know why? That's why people value things that are made by like a Japanese sushi chef so much. Because they're like, oh man, this guy came from a rich country with a high GDP per capita. We value it. Mm. So anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think of the study in the comment section below. Um, keep it civil. Is this UK study right? Is it wrong? Is it skewed? Because this is just what people are ordering. Do people in the UK know anything about food in general? Uh, until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.